Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering influenza in the pediatric patient. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead, subscribe to this channel, press that red notification button. So every time a new video is released, you'll be notified. Don't forget to like this video. Okay guys, so let's get started. So here, as you can see, influenza, that's what we know as the flu, right? Okay, it says influenza is spread from one individual to another by direct contact, and in parentheses, this is important for you to know, large drop, uh, droplet infection or by articles recently contaminated by the nasal pharyngeal secretions. So let me tell you something, when a person coughs or they sneeze and they give that virus to someone else, those particles are very large. They're not like um, micro particles, okay? Those are very large droplets. Attack rates are highest in young children. Why? Because they're nasty. They don't wash their hands. They don't cover their mouth or nose when they're coughing and sneezing, right? So <clears throat> we see this more in young children who have had no previous contact with the strain. That's something else. So they have no immune system. Well, not they don't have any immune system, but their immune system is not strong yet because you know, especially when it's, if it's a young child, they um, haven't gone to preschool yet. They haven't been around other nasty, snotty kids, right? Their body has not recognized that virus to help them help um, them fight off that virus much quicker. So it makes sense. Let's keep going. Let's look at the signs and symptoms. Most patients have a dry throat and nasal mucosa, dry cough, and a tendency towards hoarseness, a flush face, photophobia, myalgia, hyperesthesia, and sometimes exhaustion and lack of energy accommodates a, let me highlight this because this is important, guys, sudden, comes on suddenly, sudden onset of fil, um, uh, fever and chills you know children are full of energy. All of a sudden, they don't feel well that they want to stay in bed. They don't have energy to play. Sublato coup is, um, coup is common. The symptoms of influenza last four to five days. Therapeutic management. So if it's uncomplicated in children, it usually requires only symptomatic treatment. Why symptomatic? Well, remember, the flu is viral. So it's not like we have a cure, but we can treat the symptoms. For example, we can treat the runny nose. We can treat the cough. So we can treat the, the symptoms, but we can't cure it. This includes acetaminophen, that's our Tylenol, or ibuprofen for fever and sufficient fluids to maintain hydration. Children will go down very fast on you, so you have to keep them hydrated. Lots of fluids, preferably water, not juice, because um, that sugar in the juice will just add to constipation if they're constipated. So you want them to drink lots of fluids so they don't get dehydrated. And um, something I want to bring to your attention, guys, you see acetaminophen, the acetaminophen, that Tylenol, that is good for pain. It's a wonderful analgesic. And that is good for fever. It's a great antipyretic, but it has no anti-inflammatory properties. Make sure you know that. Um, and ibuprofen, you guys know ibuprofen is an NSAID. Look at this. Only oseltamivir, that's our Tamiflu, and zanamivir, that's our Relenza, are recommended because of widespread resistance to amatidine and rimatidine. So to our pediatric patients that have the flu, these are the two um, antivirals uh, you expect to be ordered for them. But guess what? We need to give it within two days of that patient being symptomatic within 48 hours. And we're going to see that in a second. Oseltamivir, I can't speak. Oseltamivir is a neurimidase inhibitor that may be administered orally for five days to children older than one years of age and adults to decrease the flu symptoms. Remember, no cure to decrease the symptoms. Look at what it says, this drug must be taken within what? Two days, 48 hours of the onset of symptoms. NCLEX absolutely expects you to know this, guys. So you're gonna expect for the patient to be given this, um, administer this medication. They're gonna take it twice a day for how many days? Five days, and you want to give it within two days, 48 hours of the onset of symptoms. Zanamivir can be used for treatment of influenza in patients seven years of age or older and for prophylaxis 
of influenza in patients five years of age or older. Look at this. Again, it must be started within 48 hours of the onset of symptoms. Do you think the author just forgot that they told us this already and they're repeating it? No, they're repeating it because it's important for you to know. You're going to see it on the test somewhere. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, zanamivir is an inhaled medication effective for type A and B influenza. And usually what we'll do is just swab their nose and it's a um, quick test. Within five minutes, we'll know if the patient's got influenza A or B. But what's so wonderful is this antiviral medication, it treats both the symptom for A or B. The drugs given twice a day, BID, for how many days? Five days. Within how long do you have to start medicating the patient? Within 48 hours of them being symptomatic. You got to know all of that. Drugs given twice daily for five days, and it's administered by a specially designed oral inhaler, the discaler. Uh, bronchospasm and the decline in lung function can occur when zinimivir is used in patients with underlying airway disease, such as what? Asthma or COPD. So would it make sense to give this medication to a patient that has asthma or obstructive pulmonary disorder or disease? Absolutely not. That is contraindicated. You better not give it. So don't let them try to trick you. They're going to give you a question where the patient's tested positive for influenza, and they're going to give you a time frame. They'll let you know that's within that 48-hour window. But when you look at the history, you see the history that patient has asthma. Are you going to blindly give that medication or are you going to hold that medication and call the healthcare provider? You're going to hold that medication and call the healthcare provider. So for prevention, NCLEX is big on primary prevention measures, guys. Primary prevention, vaccination, and education. It's always better and easier and healthier to prevent disease instead of treating disease. So we always want to prevent. The influenza vaccine, again, guys, primary um, prevention is vaccine and education. Secondary prevention are you know, tests such as biopsy, colonoscopy, those type of diagnostic tests. And then tertiary prevention are things like physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. All right. So influenza vaccine is now recommended annually for children older than six months of age. Patients who have a hypersensitivity to eggs with a history of hives, on some tests, it might not say hives, it may say urticaria, they're talking about the same thing, okay? With a history of hives after exposure, may receive the trivalent recombinant influenza vaccine in a setting with readily available personnel and equipment. The live attenuated influenza vaccine is a nasal spray flu vaccine approved by the FDA and it's licensed for administration to people two to 49 years of age. Remember, the one that's given nasally, it's a live vaccine, guys. So look what it says. This preparation contains a live virus and should not be used in individuals who are immunocompromised or receiving immunosuppressants. Why? Because it's live. It contains a live virus. So a patient who is a cancer patient, let's say they're getting chemo, they're immunocompromised, they can't get this. A patient with HIV or AIDS, they can't get this. Any patient with an, um, who's immunocompromised cannot get this live virus, okay? So anyway, they, um, anyone who is receiving immunosuppressants, they have reactive airway disease, um, have a febrile illness, receiving aspirin therapy, have chronic respiratory condition, have received a live vaccine within the tw previous 28 days, or could be pregnant or have a history of Guillain-Barre syndrome. All of those are contraindicated for that live vi um, vaccine. Where was I? Here we are. Patients who've had anaphylactic reactions to egg protein should receive a risk assessment evaluation by a physician with expertise in the management of allergic conditions. Why? Because that vaccine is made with egg. There's egg in it. So it makes sense. Care management. Oh, by the way, guys, everything that you see, I put stars next to. It's either been seen very often on big nursing exams, such as NCLEX, ATI, or HESI. All right, care management. 
prolonged fever or the appearance of fever during early convalescence is a sign of a secondary bacterial infection and should be reported to the healthcare provider for antibiotic therapy. Let's talk about that. It's very important for you to know. Remember, the flu is a viral infection, but often what happens, the patient has that viral infection for long enough, they may develop a secondary infection that is bacterial. Now, if the patient develops a bacterial infection, we're going to give antibiotics. We're giving antibiotics to kill the bacteria that, you know, develop, not the virus, okay? We don't give antibiotics for viral infections. We give antibiotics for bacterial infections, which the patient may develop after having this viral infection, okay? Children with influenza or other similar viruses, look at this, should not receive aspirin because of a possible link with Ray syndrome. That is a classic uh, question that's been seen on NCLEX, ATI, HESI, you name it. Very important for you to know. And guys, basically, this is influenza for the pediatric patient in a nutshell. Let me know what you think um, in the comment section. Let me know if you'd like me to cover more pediatrics or maybe you want me to cover more OB, maybe more peds, med surge, whatever. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please, if you haven't done so already, you got this far, go ahead, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Also, guys, you guys can check me out on my other social media platforms. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching this video, and you'll see me on the next video.